So let's talk a bit more about the span of a set of vectors. Like we mentioned in the last video, the span of a set of vectors v sub 1, v sub 2 to v sub r is the set of all possible linear combinations. So all the vectors y, so that y is equal to a linear combination of these vectors. So for any set of vectors that are non-zero, the span of the set contains infinitely many vectors. For example, if you only have one vector, then the span of that vector is going to be all the vectors that are a constant multiplying this vector. For example, if v is the vector 1, 1, then the span of this set containing only v is going to be that line up on the same line as v, but it has either the same or the opposite direction and has different length. And if v is a vector in the three-dimensional Euclidean space, the same thing happens. The span of v contains all the vectors whose endpoints are lining up on the same line. You can generalize to an arbitrary vector in the n-dimensional Euclidean space. So v is equal to v sub 1, v sub 2, v sub n. And the span of v will be all these vectors of this form where a is any arbitrary real number. What about the span of two vectors, v sub 1, v sub 2. First of all, we know the zero vector is always a linear combination of v sub 1 and v sub 2 because we can just choose the coefficients to be all zero. So the span of v sub 1 and v sub 2 definitely contains the zero vector. Next, if I have a linear combination, so if I have a vector y that belongs in the span of v sub 1 and v sub 2, and I have another vector in the span of v sub 1, v sub 2, then I claim that the sum of these two vectors y and z is also in the span of v sub 1 and v sub 2. Why is that? Because the sum is a sub 1 plus v sub b sub 1 times v sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus b sub 2 times v sub 2, which is also a linear combination of v sub 1 and v sub 2. I also know that if I stretch y and z in its length or change their directions, the vectors I obtain are still in the span of v sub 1 and v sub 2. So for any real number c, c times y, which is c times a sub 1 times v1 plus c sum times a sub 2 times v2, is still in the span of v sub 1 and v sub 2. So already I know a lot of vectors that need to belong in this set of infinitely many vectors. What kind of vectors does it not contain? If v sub 1 and v sub 2 are both in the n-dimensional Euclidean space, for example, if v sub 1 is 1, 1, v sub 2 is 4, 0, they're both two-dimensional vectors in the two-dimensional plane. Can the vector 1, 1, 1, which is in the three-dimensional Euclidean space, possibly be in the span of v sub 1 and v sub 2? No, you can't, because all the, the linear combinations of v sub 1 and v sub 2 are going to be two-dimensional vectors. So this three-dimensional vector cannot possibly belong to. So this set that contains infinitely many ve vectors is a subset of the, the n-dimensional Euclidean space if both v sub 1 v sub 2 are in Rn. And since this subset always contains the vector 0, and the sum and scalar multiplication of any vectors in the set still belongs to the set, this set is a subspace. You can generalize this to the case of R vectors in Rn. 